Okay, hey guys, welcome to this Tailwind course where you're going to learn how to use Tailwind to build your own custom UIs. If you're new to this channel, please like and subscribe on this channel for web development. So, Tailwind CSS is a CSS library for building custom UIs, but Tailwind CSS is different. With Tailwind CSS, the way you build, you don't just add components like button, then button just automatically conjures up. It is different for materialize or bootstrap because with Tailwind CSS, you add utility or low level classes to form components. Like, for example, dot flex, flex, padding top four, text center, align items center. So, you might have a problem with this. The first problem is that how can I remember these classes to, to even form things? Well, this is the reason you might know how you do not have to remember the classes and that's because it's a visual studio code extension by the people who made the win the new remembering classes will be difficult so they made that extension so when you type one class you can see the auto completion is awesome and with the auto completion as well you can also see the style rule if you hover and it's also pretty easy if you know css because tailwind css just has a flexible way of adding css classes and tailwind css also has a design system so you don't just so that you can properly manage your typography your text your sizing and everything so just overall give tailwind css a try and you'll see it is only very good so that's is this number two said it is pretty easy if you know css so or if you don't make sure you know css just the css essentials which i have a course on that so you can check out my css essential course and if you know css already then let's get started okay so now let's get started with tailwind css tailwind css.com dot slash installation i might put the documentation the link to this page on the description down below so they have to more ways you could get started with Tailwind CSS. It's a Tailwind CSS CLI, and this is often confusing, so pay attention in this part. There's a Tailwind CLI <coughs> and the use post CSS framework guys on Play CDN. So the CDN is just a CDN version, so that's self-explanatory. The framework guides how you can integrate it with frameworks of your choice: React, Angular, Vue, Laravel, Phoenix, any kind of framework you want to use guys for the framework guide why post css is using the tailwind cli but post css you can add extra things you want like auto prefixer which will remove maybe some on ucss in bundles some of your on ucss classes which can be useful but you can only you can use that with production in production because that is what is recommended but we're going to use tailwind cli just for the sake of this tutorial because it's easier to get started with so the first thing that we're going to have to do is I'm going to copy this. <clears throat> when I come to Visual Studio Code, I have a folder with this source and Tailwind config.js. Okay. So we can even do the Tailwind config.js. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to install that dependency. But wait first, we have to run npm in it because we need a package or JSON file. A package or JSON file to keep track of the dependencies. <clears throat> So we run npm init that why and that creates a package or JSON file as you can see. Then what we have to do is that we paste that code there. npm install tailwind slash d. I know that notice that that d stands for what what it means is that tailwind CSS is a dev dependent. So that's going to install it and it's quite fast. I mean, this might not be fast compared to some people's computer. Then what we have to do is that we have to init tailwind CSS like this. But if you don't need Tailwind CSS like this, you can just make a Tailwind config.js and add this. But that is way, but this is way cooler. Copy. Okay, so you need Tailwind CSS. Then after we have done that, what we have to do is that let's copy these three things. Copy. Then after I've copied that, you can see I already made it and it has those stuff. So after I've copied that, come here to the source and inside the source make a new file called input.css because this is how thing with css will compile your classes they don't just compile classes don't just magically come out from nowhere okay, so you paste all this stuff save it 
then inside the dist we'll make an output.css but we're not going to put anything because edit classes are just going to come out there and there's one more thing that we missed here which i forgot is this this will this will enable this will tell tailwind css which is what is using our classes so inside the source the html like js or any other thing you want so inside the source we can also have our index.html file And then just finally paste this. Copy. Then finally, this we have to run this command so it can compile. Okay, sorry. I'm opening a little bit of XD. So what we're gonna do is that to make this more reusable, you might see some some um, YouTubers do this or somebody run Tailwind and this could be called whatever you want and we paste in the Tailwind command like that but remove the MPX and we'll let us to just show you what this means this is saying Tailwind input file source input.css which we made output file this output.css which we made then dash watch finish run Tailwind So that is how you create or oh, oh sorry I think it's npm run npm run tailwind missing script run tailwind okay our tailwind has double l's okay let's try this again so you might have well as learned how to make a tailwind css how to make a tailwind script how to make a script a bonus tutorial that i taught you guys so let's click on go live please and voila it's the reason why it did not work was because we put this and see it's not working and that is a incorrect file name so do not do that that was the reason why it wasn't working and I save the input or CSS, save the output or CSS. So now it should work. So the first thing that we have to do that I want to do is I want to install. Whoa, is this right? I want to we want to install this extension. Very important. So if you want to enjoy the CSS, you better install this extension. Okay. Hope you have it installed. Good. So what we are doing here is essentially so we'll just give it a text of three excel so it really strips whether you are a h1 h3 h4 h6 strips away that rubbish and it just gives you you know classes to to that to it gives you its own font system so you can change this to text for excel and that's bigger or text to excel that's smaller we can remove the underline because I don't really want to use the underline. You can remove the underline. We can also give this a text align. You can see the auto completion. I don't really have to remember anything. So this is what I was trying to emphasize. People should not worry about remembering classes. Text center. Nice, right? Very good. So let's try and create a simple button. Let's make sure we can see our button though. okay so button well so let's call this submit okay for example so we can see our submit button what we have to do first of all we have to give it a background class bg blue and it has so many color palettes that you can choose from also rocks with a preview here so bg500 then let's give it a padding of five p5 so that's how we give padding i also want to give it a margin of three okay that's good but there's py there's py and px so py is for padding top and bottom y axis px is padding left and right so essentially when i'm styling buttons I like the PY to be 
more to be less while the padding left and right is more so we can make our button have rounded corners rounded we can also give it a text white So in no time already, we have already created a button already. This is what I was trying to emphasize. Tailwind TSS, it's not hard. We can even have add a cursor or pointer. Cursor pointer. So you, you can see that it's it's as already we have already made a simple button. Okay. And the auto completions are crazy, you know, but you want this, you will notice that. Just for how many classes those for a simple button, our styles are already getting like, you know, as a word for it here. Our styles are already, they are too much and sometimes they get hard to read. Okay, there's also a solution for this. I'll talk about that maybe in, in okay, we'll talk, we'll also look about that later. So, this H1, we can also give it a text of red. Just trying to just, I'm just trying to give you some searching familiarity with your own CSS. So let's copy this and uh, make this a H2. I will make this text 6XL, 5XL. Copy, make this a H3 with text 4XL and something text yellow or something. So you can see our center is spelled wrong grace. You can see the different levels of text and 6XL is not even the biggest one. So we can see our different levels of text. So let's look at the docs because you should always know how to use the docs to your advantage. It's your secret weapon and you can see when we are setting up in CSS, do already know it's like you know you just use the dogs to kind of explain it for you. So if you are to make this notification chat stuff, this is how you will build it with normal CSS. But with your own CSS, whoa, look at how you could build it. It looks way simpler and uh, concise. So let's try and replicate points because that's how you will you will learn stuff. This one looks very easy though. Maybe something like this. Maybe something like that would have been a lot more harder. So sorry guys, my internet connection is temporarily out. So I'm very sorry for that. So let's try and make that notification chat stuff. First of all, we're gonna have a div, right? Then inside this div, this is gonna be for the image. Okay. And it's also important that you might also write need to write comments so that can properly see it that's because it's not like C css classes where you give the class of button then you can probably identify your stuff then this is going to have two other digs so we're using flexbox so first of all i'm going to give this a class of flex and you might not see that for now i don't want to apply too much classes i just want to make you see it. so let's apply let, this is going to be an avatar so just for example ag or IA class, I'm gonna give this a class of BG purple 500 or 600 rather. There's not a which is 500 padding of five. Let's see how that looks. Then we can make this rounded, but this time we'll give it rounded or full. Maybe PX was going to be three. PX might be three because we need padding on the left and right. Very important here. Padding two. PX two. Okay, that looks more like a YouTube avatar. What we can just do is that we could give it a font of wood. And we could also give this a text of white. So maybe so as you, you might not be using it, but as you are learning, you gradually be learning about the classes. And you do get to a point of that you might not be using the auto completions all the time. Okay. So all you need to do.
so that's our avatar for now so what we do is that in this div here i am going to make so first of all we have your notification then let's just write you have a billion messages if you were to see this one day you would definitely collapse then what we want to do is that we want some slight margin between them and, and we also want them to be vertically and aligned and and, and horizontally centered so to do an alignment center which you will know because you took a css essential course or you somewhere know css flexbox or something okay align items or center then we can also give this a justify content of between but that is going to space it to we don't space it between the pages, but because we didn't specify a width, we can give this an arbitrary value of 200 pixels. Okay. But that is not a great idea. Giving it justify content between is not a great idea. Instead, we're going to give it justify content of center. Then we're going to assign a margin here. So margin left four. You can see we properly have that margin now. To make it stand out a little bit, what we're going to do is that we're going to give it a box shadow. Shadow Excel, shadow extra large. You can see how wide this stuff is. And we, we might also want to like limit the width, not give it an extreme width. So width 400 pixels, I can I can type in my own custom width. Okay. That is very nice. Maybe let's give it a margin from the rest of the content. M4. And also inside it looks a little, there's no space inside. So let's give it a padding inside as well. T5. Very good. And this one, this class, we can give it a class of gray. And not just any, we just have, we have to give it text gray and, and even a strength. So we can hit control space. Okay, so there's no auto completion available. Hmm. So we'll sort out the gray problem later. But you can see that one more thing is missing is that we ask we also have to give it a class of rounded maybe rounded large and that properly gives it that rounded corners there so let's give this a class of gray because if tailwind css they don't have a gray class Or you can give it slate. But if they don't have a specific class, Tailwind CSS is also extendable. So this amount of classes that we have, this we can also extend it. And, uh, but we don't want to give it background of slate of slate. We don't want to give that text of slate so that it has that type of gray message. You have that amount billion messages. So notification. That's how it is very easy guys so this is was like a basic and an introduction to team with css to warm up your knowledge and showing you how to use tailwind css if you like the video like the video if you want to subscribe that would mean a lot thank you and i'll see you next time so let's start okay let's talk about two things one other states another state we haven't talked about it so let's talk about that first. so in our button for an example now we might want to dim the color the user hovers around. so we can for an example add this hover then we had a colon of the class we want so you can see hover the bg blue should be 200 <clears throat> save and if we hover, you can see that it's a lighter color. So that's how it is to do 
other states there are also any states any there are also focus states as well so we can say focus border should be two should be two and the border color outside of the focus the border color should be border color or border blue let me just because you know one thing i want to say here is that the border will not work without the border width so by default we will have the border color but we won't have a border width so only when the user hovers uh, that will have that border okay. see so if we hover if we not click it also had that focus let's make it move and so we can see that focus those are focus modes so that is just over state in a nutshell you can expand on it and make something even more crazier but i just kept it simple so now let's talk about something you might need more responsive design so tailwind is a mobile first component library what it means is that it starts with mobile at first just the way we're doing hover colon whatever style shade that's how we can do it here but when you say small so let's see this in action first of all small view screens are for six so small is for 640 pixels and above medium is 768 large is 1.4 extra large is 1002 and 2xl is open above so you can customize this if you want, but we stick we stick with the default. I normally stick with the default because my own responsive breakpoints, my own is will not be as state of the art as still wins. So first of all, let's start with our notification. So let's add some more things to it. Like first of all, our button should be inside our notification. And let's just put it here. And instead of submit, let's make this make more sense. Check it out. Save. <clears throat> that might have messed it up. I wonder and why did he mess it up? Because of the margin. This guy has margin, so let's remove that as well. So sometimes we might want to like change the flex direction when we, when we are at 600 pixels when we are below 600 pixels nothing might happen but when the class will go above it as you can see that starts to work you know let's let, let's let's make this black by default so you can see it hmm. so as you can see now so immediately as we go above 640 pixels that's when that this is what, this is what we mean mobile first because you apply your mobile files first, then as you go up, you will now be adding your additional styles. Mm. So let's apply that same concept here. So this is what we'll do is that we attach a flex colon class. Then, okay, sorry. Well, that isn't even it. Oh. There's a lot. Okay, now that's it. <clears throat> so we apply that flex column class. But when we get above a certain view height, we want to change it back to row. So the way we do that, you can attach small flex row. Save. So right now we're in the small zone. We're, we're, we're in the small zone. Well, sorry, we're above the small zone. So immediately as we come to move back, that it comes there. When we pass 640 pixels, it goes back up. So that is the responsive design kind of thing. But me, I'm not quite used to this type of mobile first stuff because I even kind of see me making mistakes, a little bit of mistakes because I'm not quite used to this. Because I normally use max width because they are using me mobile first. I normally use that part first. So okay. But mobile first is advised because you on on a mobile screen, when you build a website, it's and you build all these things, try to convert to mobile you are you are putting yourself in a state of complexity. So when you start a mobile, is com the complexity grows up, but not you trying to bring down the complexity. Complexity grows up, and that's how people like it. So that's how you can make it responsive. 
that's just a bird's eye view of responsive design i just wanted to just show you there are other breakpoints as well as large extra large and two extra large that's that's just like a bird's eye view of two, two, two. okay so this is the final part of this course and this is just how we can properly clean all this i'll leave you with this amount of stuff so how we can clean it so how can we clean it i stopped the server for a second there so i'm going to run it again so how can we clean it well we can use the css we can use the special no it's not available to css this is special apply directly so let's see how we can use that so first of all we just come to the i think it's the input.css right we come to the input.css we define a class for example what do we want to shorten so we want to shorten this card let's start with this card so we can x all the classes come here let's just come here you can take away the classes then uh come here define a kind of class then like this apply oops what happened to my copy oops. okay this <clears throat> So when it has no card or card, it's going to apply all these classes. Then we can just write card. Save. We'll check it if it works too as well. So we can X this as well. And we can come here and say avatar. Apply. Apply. So we apply this. Then we can come here and write avatar then finally we can shorten the one for the button the headings are just for testing there so button apply this button is mysteriously the longest and i'm not shocked because buttons are extremely hard to style so style so you see that looks like a normal css as in you know that's like a normal css styling stuff so if you come here now refresh it's still working if we open the browser you can see those classes they just to just show you everything is still working and that's how still win css are pretty smart they thought of that so you see that's working very that plays in the browser and that is the end of this tailwind css Okay, see you next time.